A very common issue with snakes, especially ball pythons, is stuck shed. Usually this happens when you're using a poor substrate option like aspen for ball pythons, or there's too much ventilation in the enclosure, or a bunch of other various issues which I went over in an older video. And luckily it's a pretty easy issue to fix. However, there are a few spots that'll be more difficult when getting shed off, and those include the tip of the tail, the head, and the neck. The neck makes sense because it's way more wrinkly on most snakes than the rest of their body because it has to like stretch and expand so that they can eat those just massive meals. And then the tip of the tail, I don't know why that happens, it's pretty easy to just peel off. And then the top of the head is also pretty difficult. This is the most difficult for you to manually get off because the average snake is not a fan of being touched on the head. This is known as being head shy. And although there are a lot, like a lot of boa species are usually fine with it, while ball pythons are kind of more individual when it comes to whether you, they let you touch them on the head or not. But most of them are not a fan of being like grabbed and like having shed ripped off of them because it's not a fun feeling. However, stuck shed, when it's on there for too long, will build up over time and can cause a lot of skin issues, it's super uncomfortable, and if it's in certain places, like on their eye cap, it can cause permanent blindness or just permanent issues all around that we don't need to go into, but it's not fun. This is just gonna be a short video focusing on how to get shed off the top of the head. So this here is just a cute wild type ball python that we got yesterday, and uh, it had tons of shed all over its body. Now the previous owners were able to get most of that off, but there was still some on the head and neck, which we'll work on today. The first thing I do is fill up a container of water just a few inches so that the snake can fully submerge itself, but it does not drown and there's still air in the tub. I usually base the water temperature off the hot spot of the snake. So a ball python, I keep my ball python set about 92 degrees, and then I'll just make the water between like like 90 and 100 degrees. I use a temp gun for this. You can even just put your hand in and feel if it's too hot or not. It's pretty simple overall. Uh, essentially just don't let it freeze your snake and don't let it cook your snake. Uh, now snakes are generally not a fan of water. Some people suggest putting like a rock or a hide or something in the water so that the ball python can kind of have something to hold on to. Uh, but I just went ahead and put the snake in and I put a cover that had a few holes in it. Obviously you don't want to suffocate your snake but you also want the humidity to be super high in here. Now, the issue is with shed on the head is, is you're probably thinking you wanna submerge their head in the water uh, so that it actually soaks and loosens up. You don't wanna do this, you don't wanna like forcefully drown your snake, although they can hold their breath for a long time. But if you have a lid on the tub, uh, the humidity is gonna be so high that it will still easily soften up the shed. So it doesn't actually matter if the head of the snake is not under the water. If it voluntarily puts it under the water, that's fine. It's, it's not drowning itself as long as it can still get up if it wants to, but it's not required and should still be enough. I usually do this for about 10 or 15 minutes. You can monitor if you want, of course, like you should at least check on it every few minutes to make sure it's alive. <laughs> and you can see all the condensation building up on this tub after like five minutes, which is a clear sign that there's lots of moisture in there, even if the snake's not under the water. So after about 15 minutes, I took the lid off and we've got this nice damp snake. <laughs> now comes the fun part, getting the shed off. Usually on the rest of the body, it's pretty easy because you can just run your fingers down. You can also moisten your hands. Uh, and I mean, you can use like a rag or paper towel or something, but the skin on your hands are pretty good with this. Also, if you have any fingernails, these can kind of help peel away without actually tearing or hurting your animal. However, the head and neck are the tough parts. Now, this is where the not so fun part comes in because you are just going to have to forcefully restrain the snake. It's not gonna enjoy it, you probably won't enjoy it, but getting this over in five minutes is better than having like a lifetime of problems with your animal. So this is not exactly a foolproof technique. You shouldn't, I mean, shouldn't be taking my advice to do this with like venomous snakes or whatever, but I have had to do it with a lot of the animals that we get in that have stuck shed. So I feel comfortable at least giving you an idea of what you should do, or at least what I do. I take my thumb and my index finger and hold kind of right behind the skull of the snake. Uh, I'd put them on the sides, not on the top and bottom, because I don't want to suffocate them. Uh, but putting it on the sides will kind of keep them in place while allowing them to still breathe and like not completely panic. But there is a very high chance that they'll kind of coil and curl around and not be a fan. They may even hiss a little, and depending on just how grumpy your snake is, they might try and take a few nips at you. Luckily, most pet snakes that we'll be keeping, other than like big species, are not gonna do much with a bite. We had to do an assist feeding a while back, and I used this basically same holding technique for that. And uh, since the snake's mouth was open from assist feeding, it kind of moved its mouth and one of the teeth got stuck in my finger for a second. So like, it's not a huge deal. It kind of hurts, but it's, it's really the anticipation coming up to it that's bad. It's not the actual pain. 
Uh, but when doing something like this, there's a very low chance that this will happen because the snake will usually go into defense mode and try and just get away and hide. But they are strong, so you're gonna have to try and keep a good grip. And it usually takes me two or three attempts because I have not perfected this technique, I guess. Once I've got a good grip, I just used my finger to basically rub at the skull firmly and confidently, but not too hard to where it's hurting the snake or anything, of course. And I ran my finger back and immediately the shed just came off. Again, it's very simple. Like this is probably a very short video, uh, but most people are just worried about stressing the snake out while doing this. And we just have to face it. You're gonna stress your snake out. They're not gonna like it. But again, this whole process took maybe 20 minutes from soaking to peeling and it's all done hopefully forever because at this point the goal is that you'll fix the husbandry so that it's working just fine for your snake and you will not have any more stuck shed. Again don't forget to check the bottom of the jaw as well see if there's anything to peel there and then I just kind of looked around there were a few other tiny spots where there were individual scales because even those over time can build up with more shed and cause skin damage or scale damage so just making sure those are all peeled off. You could also use something like tweezers but my concern is that they are these sharp metal things and if I miss I don't want to stab them in the eye or something so that's why I try and stick to using my pretty soft fingers so even if you do touch the eye their eyes are protected and they won't just be like harmed by you touching them speaking of eyes there are eye caps which i've also had to deal with in snakes at this moment i don't have any that have eye cap issues but i basically use the same technique holding them with the head after a bath uh, and then what i do differently is either taking a damp rag and carefully wiping from the front to the back and i've also used a scotch tape technique using very like just barely sticky tape rolling it around your finger and then starting at the front of the eye, assuming that you gotta make sure there's a stuck eye cap because you don't wanna do this on their, their healthy eye. If you know there's an eye cap stuck there, uh, I took the tape, I put it at the front and I rolled it back and it just peeled the scale off. It took a few tries, but that's what worked for me. So I just wanted to give this short tutorial because we had the snake with this very simple, but very important issue. And I thought I'd show you how to do it. Hopefully that helped. Let me know if you want more random like tutorials like this on things that might help out with your reptile husbandry. If you're interested in some of the animals we have, you can check out emeraldscales.com. This one will be available at some point, but we have a wait period to make sure the animals are doing well before listing them and making sure they're getting up to proper weight and everything. Also, you can follow on Instagram for more daily random stuff. And uh, that's it for this video. So I'm Alex, and thanks for watching.